Now listen, I know y'all talk about me, and I know you think that I don't know what kind of equipment has been in that picture we've been showing for today. Would you click to the next slide? There we go, right? Oh, pastor, he's such a city slicker. He doesn't know that's a manure spreader that he picked. Well, I picked it on purpose, thank you very much, given what we heard in the gospel reading today about Jesus' parable to spread manure on that fig tree. And really what you see there is a picture of the Holy Spirit there in the tractor, right? Red is the color of the Holy Spirit there, amending and fertilizing your everyday lives so you'll be good soil for the Word. And, well, I suppose some of us here are going to smell a little earthier, shall we say, than others, it seems. Now, I know you guys aren't out to get me, thinking I didn't know what that tractor was doing. And I'm not out to get you all, right? I know that that Ten Commandment uh, Wednesday evening series has been tough so far. Sometimes that stuff is hard to work through. I get it. But you would be surprised just how many folks do think that the church or even God is out to get them. And what does that even mean that God or the church is out to get them? Usually it means that they're doing something that Christians generally, historically, openly disapprove of, right? Something like having two wives, abandoning one's family, those sorts of things. Or it means they got a chip on their shoulder treating everyone in the church like some mean-spirited jerk. Right? That's probably 90% or more of all the cases. But now, to be honest, that doesn't mean the church has always been on her best and most winsome behavior in these matters either. It takes two to tango and all that. Now, I suppose that's a long way around simply to say that there's plenty of repentance to go around for us and for others. Now, we've already said several times this Lent repentance is one of those words we think we know all about, so we ignore it. It means to change one's mind, change one's behavior, and change one's conscience. It means to go back in the direction we're supposed to toward God's promises of forgiveness and new life and salvation, toward godly behavior, and toward godly, not political, morals. Our human beings seem to be superstitious by nature, right? Even hardened atheists, nihilists, and anarchists will attempt to attribute moral significance to and find purpose in disasters. In our gospel reading, Jesus tells us not that God can't cause some disaster or even some blessing to occur. It's just not that simple. Because all of us, even the very best of us, fail when we're held up to God's perfection. God's intention for humanity is not the state fair where we feel better about ourselves because we're not some poor other person with a face full of funnel cake. Rather, what God intends is for us to live free from the plagues of sin and failure, of death and sickness, of the devil and evil starting right now and continuing all into eternity. When our conscience is pricked by some catastrophe, it's a step too far to declare that it's divine punishment for others, certain sins and failures. Yet it's right on target to see God's word and God's spirit at work to cause us to reflect on our own status, either doing what we're not supposed to be doing or getting back on track with what we are supposed to be doing. Now maybe from this perspective, God is in fact out to get us. Not to get us to cause disaster, but to get us to return to his ways of abundant life, leaving behind our ways of suffering and death. Next slide. 
Perhaps it helps us, especially us men here this morning, to think about it in terms of a good coach. Coaches aren't limited to youth sports. We have coaches and mentors in our jobs, our educations, our everyday lives, our hobbies, and more. And like you, I've had some good ones over the years. A good coach can use a bad example to show you, to get you to a bad example, whether it's a simple mistake or an error, to improve your performance, to get you to focus on what you're supposed to be doing. A coach is not out to get you, no matter how focused or even pedantic the instruction seems. He's trying to get you to come around to a right and better way of doing things. That example only goes part way here with Jesus. He's not trying to improve your performance per se, right? Not directly at least, that sort of comes later. His goal is for you to see the dead end that you're headed down, to see that the corporate ladder we try to climb doesn't go all the way to the top, to see the game of keeping up with the other families at work or school or sports never gets ahead, to see that the media that we consume, even us here in the church, the anger, the porn, the escapism, the passivity, the envy, is stealing your virility and leaving you sterile. Jesus wants you to come around to his forgiveness, new life, and salvation, to turn to his grace, mercy, and love that is always for you, no matter what. No matter what. What? Well, that leaves us one last part of the story, I suppose. The manure, where we started. <clears throat> now, St. Augustine, who was a lot smarter than any two or three of us, as he thought about this Bible story, he found a useful interpretation of the manure. It's actually, uh, we draw it out for you here on number four on your purple sheets. If you look at number four, it takes you that next step that St. Augustine recommends. Because what he saw in the repentance, what he saw in the manure was the repentance resulting from God's grace, mercy, and love for us, for you and for me as a thing that enriches and amends the soil of everyday life so that we move from fruitless to fruitful. And that's not merely something to think about, but it's something to do. As the baptized, believing, beloved members of the body of Christ we cooperate with the Holy Spirit, however weakly, and always following his lead. You see, it's this work responding to the prompting of the Holy Spirit that we learn one day at a time, not only to change our habits and our desires, but also to stop making excuses for ourselves, to justify ourselves, and then simply to be humbled and sorry for what we now know was unproductive and unprofitable. No matter how barren our lives have been previously, our Heavenly Father through His Son, Jesus, and in the Holy Spirit has mercy on us. He doesn't want to get us, destroying us on our livelihoods. He wants us to live our lives abundantly so that we produce fruit that brings life out in the world touched by our everyday lives. Amen.